Yes, this is a shot from Glass Onion. I want to talk about the movie Glass Onion, the sequel to Knives Out, because I just watched it and I loved it. There will not be any spoilers. I just want to talk about some visual stuff that I'm seeing that I think is very teachable and very... Uh, this is a friggin' masterclass. This, this movie is just absolutely outstanding, and that's the use of the ensemble... Uh, visually and you know so if you've ever heard of like actor blocking or scene composition that's what I want to talk about and so this is the first scene uh, we got sort of Ed Norton in the front and then we have sort of another plane of a different group of people and then on sort of a third plane we have the background and so that's the first thing I want to talk about is the actual like layered composition that so much of this movie does because the, the big trick, the big difficulty with ensembles is trying to get especially in the wide especially in the establishing shot everybody into the scene um, and actually have it make sense and so we got some people staggered over here we got somebody staggered over here we got people over here and there's context and so he's on the first plane that's a different level of importance than the second plane but even in the second plane there's different things going on they all have they're having different reactions to the same thing he's looking at and there's also a separation here she doesn't seem to have anything to do with them and then just keep going on as your eyes sort of move around the screen in that same plane there's a guitar and that's relevant to a, th a moment that happened earlier and then yeah you have this you know this villa up here all this kind of stuff so we have we have uh, a character's reaction uh, some secondary characters reaction and then we have sort of the location as its own character as well um, absolutely fantastic and I think this sort of layering of the plane of characters is very useful obviously he's looking at something I believe Daniel Craig and the other woman are what he's looking at and here's kind of the reverse shot but as, as you can tell I kind of miss Daniel Craig because so I'm just using stills I don't want to actually steal from the movie in a meaningful way but what had happened was uh, so a lot of these a lot of these wides actually have a camera move involved too and so the camera was actually over here and it sort of moved over and I just caught it at the end but again, you still have the same thing. You have layering. So you have well, the first plane is the backs of these people, you know, seeing what seeing what they were looking at finally. And then you have a second plane, which is Ed Norton's character, and a third plane, which is Daniel Craig and this woman. And then a fourth plane is this glass dock with sort of this background. And I think there's actually a yacht back there too. Uh, but that's the other the second thing I want to address when it comes to uh, the visual storytelling, the composition of this movie specifically is uh, so much of the wide. Uh, and the establishing shot starting the scene has movement and it usually has a character uh, taking you through the movement in this case we don't but we kind of have the reverse because he's walking this way from right to left but in a lot of cases like in this establishing shot for instance uh, again there's a couple moves it actually goes from bottom down up because it starts with the fax machine but you see Daniel Craig cross and make his way over here and then you have much more conventional what would be considered coverage which is uh, when Daniel Craig sits down, he's going to be looking over this way, and you have you have a shot, you have a reverse shot. But even then, if you notice, uh, Kate Hudson actually is in both shots, and that's because she gets up, and the camera sort of follows the movement of her getting up, leaving, and then sitting down next to Daniel Craig. And then there's actually a third shot here, which is this woman over here. And so, uh, again, Daniel Craig crosses, and then you have shot reverse shot with a little bit of movement of kate hudson's character and then you just sort of bounce around through the conversation in standard what is called you know just standard coverage of, of shot reaction shot uh, but again i think what is so spectacular about this uh the storytelling device this visual storytelling device is the ability to uh take uh what is a very abstract a very you know complicated composed design scene and break it up into what actually logically makes sense and actually guide the viewer by having characters walk through in essential places. It also helps that where he's headed is the middle of the screen. And then the next shot, you're going to be looking in the middle of the screen and you're basically going to be seeing Ed Norton. So uh, that was a twofer. Again, this stuff needs to be taught in school. It's absolutely just, it's mind blowing the level of the level of ability here. So uh, here's another example of sort of the layering of the ensemble. We have sort of a first layer, maybe she's in the first layer too. Then we have a second layer back here, a third layer back here with the, the luggage behind her. And then we even have a fourth layer. And it's kind of a, it's, it's a level of importance. And again, Daniel Craig is probably over here looking at these people, but there's a, there's a bit of a status thing too. If you notice in all the scenes, uh, this woman right here is, is always in the, is, is sort of off to the side, kind of dejected. She's, she's got a completely different status thing. And it's told visually, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, Daniel Craig, for the same reason, because he's the, you know, the investigator, he's usually alone in whatever he's doing. 
So that's why it's so uncomfortable when Kate Hudson sits next to him because he's so used to being alone in the in the conversation because everybody is at odds with him because he suspects them or they they fear he suspects them. So um, the other thing is again we have this beautiful I believe this is Greece that you know the beautiful character that is the location that they're in is is part of it too sort of wrapping around them but you know again the so much of the story is each individual character's independent reactions happening because you know humans characters they're not just they're not just used when you look at them they're they're reacting the whole time they're having an emotional moment they're the heroes of their own stories and so if you look around the scene you're getting different reactions based on who's looking uh, she's a lot more excited than he is that kind of thing so yeah we talked about that we talked about that talk about that okay and then let's do some interiors and so Part of what makes this ensemble, <clears throat> excuse me, makes this ensemble so good is uh, there's a very three dimensionality of these of these rooms because these these huge villas are just absolutely gigantic. These big these big echoey rooms, which you know for sound is definitely kind of a nightmare. But even when you're inside, uh, there's there's a three dimensionality here. So it's it's both height and depth. And so the, in the first layer we have the two guys talking on the couch. In a, in a second layer we have. Kate Hudson pouring herself a drink, and in the third layer we have another character, this you know, sort of another antagonist, way deep in the back, uh, but they're also at different heights too. Uh, very useful, very interesting, and there's just a lot going on. There's a lot for the for the eye to see. Obviously, you want to be in this conversation, but because of where she's composed, she's in the middle, so you do see her pouring this drink because it is very close to one of the thirds lines where you can put stuff. Uh, so is this painting uh, hilariously. And again, she's also on one of those third lines. So this third line here, uh, vertically, very useful. Uh, here's another interior. It's the same couch, but it's sort of a wraparound. So like to the right of this is where this would happen. This happens at a different moment. But again, you have you have a couple different layers. You have sort of the first layer, and then possibly a second layer, and then you have sort of the third layer, which is all this gaudy Ed Norton art that he collects because that's sort of his character. Um, but moving on. Uh, here's a, a classic, classic, you know, establishing shot for an ensemble dinner scene because one of the most difficult things to shoot when you have a big hefty ensemble, again, because if you shoot traditional coverage, you know, shot reverse shot, if you're at a big dinner table, you're, you're doubling every single time you add a person and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people, plus Daniel Craig's character is the one addressing them. Um, and this is, you know, this is one of those tricks that you don't, you don't notice it until you notice it. And so... He's sitting really far away from everybody in order to fit in the shot uh, proportionally correctly. So they spend a lot of time, you know, setting up the shot. She's, you know, about the same distance from her as he is from him. And then there's a, a ch empty chair here because we have an extra person. And the only person that really gets cheated in space is her, which actually sort of narratively works because she is, other than Daniel Craig, the other outsider in the story. And so she is sort of cheated of space. It also helps that we got a very hilarious, I believe that's a jaguar, and we got this uh, this guy holding a, a goblet up. Fantastic, but yeah, it's just, you know, so, but if you looked at this from above, the staggering of how they're sitting would make absolutely no sense. Uh, nobody's sitting across from each other, and there's a weird gap here, and the, these two are sitting in a weird spot. Again, she's always staggered away from somebody because she's sort of the assistant uh, to, to Kate uh, Hudson's character. Um, super fun. So let me just knock out the rest. Uh, this is a, this is another good example. So it's a huge room, and we know that. And there's all this glass artwork everywhere, and you know that's actually the Mona Lisa. And so this is one of those where I believe the camera went from right to left. And so originally the Mona Lisa was sort of between these two heads, but because of you know parallax, by the time I, we got to this shot, the Mona Lisa kind of sits behind Edward Norton's head, but. You're getting this uh, sense of claustrophobia because of how everybody, even though physically they're blocked so that they're actually s standing far apart from each other in space, because of how it's set up, because of this layering where she's on her own layer, they seem to be on their own layer, she's on, she's on her own layer, he's on his own layer, and then the Mona Lisa is deep in the back, they seem very close together, very, you know, uncomfortably claustrophobic, and that helps with the psychology of the scene because, again, they're probably talking to Dan and Craig if I had to be a, be a, a betting man, but... It's this, it's this distrust in the fact that they're, they're getting bad news and all they want to do is leave. Uh, and it's, it's this great optical illusion inside this giant house that they're super claustrophobic. I think it's just, it's super useful. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is, uh, I, I didn't have the other one, did I? No, I just had this one. Okay, so 
This is Daniel Craig addressing everyone. And so again, we have the first layer is Daniel Craig telling the story. The second layer is uh, two individual reactions. The third layer is the assistant sort of dejected in the corner. And then we have a gaudy, uh, like, you know, it will, actually it looks like Ed Norton for Fight Club. I, I might actually be that picture. That's actually kind of hilarious, but it's, it's a gaudy, it's a gaudy non photorealistic picture of Ed Norton sort of over his shoulder. It's these three layers of storytelling, but in the ensemble, you have everybody accounted for, and then there's definitely a reaction shot that I do not have. Nope. Um, who he's, I believe he's addressing Ed Norton's character right here. Uh, you know, placing the, placing the ensemble in the space because every character is going to inhabit a space differently. They're going to understand the space differently. He's slouched down. He's sitting up. She's pouring a drink, standing up straight. She's pacing around because she's trying to find her space. There's, there's a lot of psychology going on. So, um, yeah, it's just, Ed, you know, it's little things you can take from this, but I just think in the, in the context of something as daunting as the ultimate ensemble, the big wide ensemble, so much of this movie is told in the big wide ensemble, um, which helps that they have these giant, you know, out, they're either outdoors or they have these enormous rooms that they're in. Uh, but it's also just, you know, given, given enough time, given enough practice, given enough expertise, you can really nail this, uh, this ensemble and really enhance the story by all the subtleties and all the sort of the character motivations worked into the physical blocking and positioning of the characters themselves. Um, something to think about. I, I, this, this movie is fantastic for a bunch of other reasons, but the, the visual storytelling of the ensemble and, and blocking them in, in space is, is second to none. And uh, I'm digging it. So what do you guys think? Did you see the movie? I recommend it. Uh, like, share, subscribe. We'll catch you, catch you next time.